Next up, we got William Hudson, Unlocking the Future of Real Estate. Very good transitioning, actually. Yeah. Let's give him a round of applause. Hey everyone, my name is William Houston. I'm the founder at Bay Street Capital Holdings. Uh, we're an investment firm. We're registered with the SEC. We manage $90 million. Um, how do I move the slides forward? Push. That didn't do it. Is there like a buzzer? How do I move the slides forward? Big green button. Cool. So I uh, started the firm when I was 19. Uh, my father became disabled when I was at Georgia Tech, and I read a book called The 4-Hour Work Week. And in that book, he talks about not working very much. So as a college student, I was looking for a business where I could have a business that was creating passive income. I started a call center in the Philippines, and I did that for 13 years. We made phone calls for other investment firms. Uh, in 2017, we registered Bay Street, and we provide asset management for traditional asset classes. Uh, I've been to 20, 20, over 20 countries, uh, and I own $10 million of real estate personally, the property that you're looking at now uh, being one of those. We have a team of 12. We're, we're a diverse team across multiple states and countries with the sole focus of providing access to luxury properties to everyone. So instead of you having to be an accredited investor to participate in these types of projects, you're able to say, hey, I like the idea of being able to participate in that type of investment without having to go the traditional uh, LP route where you are required to be an accredited investor. So how does it work? The average person travels 14 days a year in the US. They spend about $800 a night. Uh, you've multiplied the 800 over the, the, the 12 to 14 days that you're traveling. The average American is spending $12 million or $12,000 a year on travel. That $12,000 average person travels from age 22 to 72. After 72, you're a little too old to travel. You take the regular inflation that we're supposed to see at 2.5%. $12,000, 2.5%, 50 years, you're going to spend a million dollars of your earned income on travel. Now, I saw that as a problem as a first generation person who got into technology, parents, you know, worked super hard as teachers but didn't have passive income stream. There was an innate desire in me to go explore the world. I'd never been outside of the country. But every time I did that, I was spending money that I was earning and I was enriching the landlord or I was enriching Marriott or I was, I was having to you know, kind of pay the price to address this innate desire to explore. So what we're doing is we're saying, look, for somebody who's going to spend ten, fifteen thousand dollars on a honeymoon this year, and then another ten, fifteen thousand dollars to take their family to Disney World next year, we're saying have access to our U.S.-based properties. Uh, that's going to be fifteen thousand dollar one-time fee. So you're not paying the ongoing maintenance. Uh, Bay Street, the firm, is running the hospitality property. So what you're doing is saying, I get access. So we've heard a lot about tokenization of real estate. We're not tokenizing the actual properties. So we're not saying we own this and let's tokenize the real estate. We're separating ownership from usage rights. So the firm goes, buys the properties. We then separate out who's allowed to use those properties based on the membership. The reason why there's only a thousand members is because anybody doing math really quick would realize that you have to have, have very large properties in order to offer anything more past a thousand members. So the roadmap is we're buying properties basically every three to four months in key areas with interest rates rising. This is actually an opportunity for us because there are very few organizations that have cash on hand that aren't concerned with the price. And from a membership standpoint, since the members are paying fifteen dollars to $30,000, 15K or 15 Ethereum for you know, US-based properties, 30K to have access to global properties, we're not concerned with vacancy rates or debt service because we're able to take a lot of that cash once we as a team have put down that down payment to front load what we're actually going to be paying long term. When the investors aren't staying there, uh, once we clear the 1,000 memberships, so we're in pre-mint right now, we're going to burn the initial 
token, and then they will receive a reg A token because when you receive a non-zero value for a security, it has to be it has to be registered where the SEC understands that uh, yet or not. So the when you're not using the property, you're incentivized because you're receiving an income stream. So for somebody who's got fifteen, thirty thousand dollars in cash, they don't have to leave it in their checking account. They get to use these properties on a year-to-year -year basis, and they pick from our portfolio the same that you would log into an Airbnb, except instead of you paying the person who owns Airbnb, you now actually own the space that you're in, even once you've left your home. So you're able to address that innate desire to explore the world without having to actually pay someone else to stay in their property. You now own access to these properties. So the way our uh, actual smart contract works, we're incentivizing people to hold these properties. So again, there is an income stream associated with it. They don't have to be an accredited investor to be able to go out and purchase said property. If they were to transfer that, we're not focused on the secondary market. So it's not going to be it's not going to be traded on like a like an open sea or anything like that. If someone wanted to transfer their membership, they'd be able to do that, but they would lose access to earlier properties. So every time we purchase another property, say we've purchased our fifth property, if you transfer transfer that, you lose access to the first four. So it's, there's no incentive really for someone to attempt to hold it and then sell it to someone else. And once those thousand memberships are filled in, there won't be uh, additional memberships. So this isn't the sort of thing where someone buys it early and then they attempt to sell it for significantly more down the line. So how is it different? A lot of people think of a timeshare or like an Airbnb, VRBO, or like a... Uh, you know, like staying in a hotel. The big difference is there isn't an ongoing expense. So if you were to go and purchase the average investment property, you're gonna need about six figures to own just a second property. You're then gonna pay about 1% of the purchase price in managing that property. You then as an individual are gonna to have to go and make sure when the washer and dryer is broken or the cleaning fee isn't paid or whatever is going on, you're personally responsible for that. As far as timeshares, timeshares are worthless because you don't actually own anything. They're extremely difficult to get rid of, and they cost significantly more. So you're paying, on average, $40,000 upfront, and then you're paying an ongoing couple thousand dollars a year to have access to the timeshare. And these properties are significantly lower in terms of luxury-type quality. So it's like you're walking down you know, to your particular room, more like an apartment complex. So why will it succeed? There's basically underlying value, right? So we're already running the business of real estate. We're already purchasing these assets. We're focusing on key metropolitan areas. So we're buying in areas where we already know the traffic, traffic is there. What we think is unique in terms of travel, especially in this time of COVID, is people are actually more interested, especially in the luxury space, of having a private residence. So we're not looking to buy large uh, hotels or things like that. We're looking more at private residence clubs. So you can imagine something like, we built 30 properties, you have the whole home to yourself, and when you're not there, you're receiving the rental income from said property without being required to be an accredited investor. Um, here are some pictures of the property that we just bought. Um, it's in LA, California, uh, particularly Venice Beach. Uh, this will be the first one we're opening up. Uh, we're, we're announcing it uh, as a product basically today. And anybody who is interested, as we mentioned, you'll be able to log into our website is resthaven.xyz. You can currently book this property right now if you were to want to, but kind of getting back to why you wouldn't, you know, this is off market is rented to athletes and entertainers. The per night rate is about 3,500 a night versus if you were a member, you could stay for two nights a year. Once you stayed in LA, you can stay at one of our LA properties, one of our Tokyo properties, one of our Paris properties like that. That's and that's cool. uh, what we're doing. Thank you, William. Thanks. Thank you. Very, very good.